Oh. What's my current time? Oh, no. Okay. What is it? What? Okay, it says <laughs> both times you booted up the game because I booted it up once just to make sure like it worked. A lot of people don't take the step seriously. They just leave the clock set at 12 and call it a day. Oh, that's interesting. But you actually, you're actually taking the time to set the clock and I appreciate that. What? <laughs> how I know that you care about this experience and you're paying attention. I don't even have any way of knowing if the time you're setting are correct. Oh, tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Since you've been so cooperative, next time you boot up the game and see this screen, just set the clock to your favorite time. Okay. Go ahead, pick whatever time you want. Even if it's not the correct time, you've earned it? If this is so cute. I didn't see that. I literally just booted up the first time, went into settings to make sure it had like subtitles and shit on, and then <laughs> Okay. Well, this is cute. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Oh, I love his voice. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I'm in control now! Oh my god. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Where's the meeting room? That's not the meeting room. This is weird. Huh. 
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Fuck that. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley <laughs> knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, I know. At the beginning, I was like, I'm totally just gonna, like, follow along with what the narrator wants. And then I was like, nah, fuck that. Can I, like, um... Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. It is. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you see, but eager to get back to business, <laughs> Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nah. What's over here? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible <laughs> he wasn't five years ago. This feels a lot like Portal to me. Like once you finally escape from GLaDOS and she's like chasing you around. That's what this feels like. <gasps> Key card. Oh, I can't jump. Okay. Do not jump from cargo lift while it's in motion. Okay. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I this is GLaDOS. I your trust in someone else. Like, written all over it. But the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control <laughs> of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. <laughs> Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. can't jump holy shit all of his co-workers were gone what could it mean stanley decided to go to the meeting room perhaps he had simply missed a memo no matter how hard stanley looked he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers Wait. I just want to controls. Oh no, it is space. Why am I not? What the fuck? I'm pushing space and it's not working. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just got an achievement that's literally, you can't jump. I, I would like button mash space a little bit. Oh my god. When Stanley came to a set of two No, fuck doors, that. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, okay, I'll walk through. Wow. Yes, this room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. I want to see where it goes. Perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. 
I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This Who's is her? It, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. Glados? She's been waiting. What's in there? I don't want to go through the only door. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. Hello? Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about- Get your day <laughs> Gotcha! Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? No. They'd want to commit their life to you. Jesus. I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Sorry, but you're in my story <laughs> now. Fine. What? This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. I already died. I jumped off. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. I don't want to push P. Okay, fine. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now the game's he's coming back to me. work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. I don't want to push it. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day I that tried he to, to and it wouldn't take was a it. reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Like, it won't... Nothing happens if I push anything other than C. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. Oh, interesting. The excited him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. What?
It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Hence this game. Okay. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Mm. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. Can I push a different button? I don't think I can. Oh. I think I have to push the button. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Okay. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... <laughs> what? All of his co-workers were gone. What the what fuck? What did it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, oh, this is he weird. entered the door on his left. Okay. Sure. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Hmm. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Let it ball up inside you, take it out passive-aggressively on other co-workers. Where's that co-workers for not supporting you more? Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic on the header and throw some bevel on the text this will ensure a calm and productive work yeah everyone's unique you most of all i don't like it <laughs> well this is great What 
what is the death sport portion in primary review schedule? But I think that's a stupid idea. What is this? Teenagers, size the demographic, space between the teenagers. What? Charts need to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographic. More water coolers. More water cooler heaters? <laughs> oh, can I alter it? No. I need one of those um, dry erase thingies. Not cost efficient. Standard graphics? No. Hmm. Okay. Oh, <gasps> I could go in the broom closet. Stan stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Mm, no, I think there's something here. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. No, bullshit. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. No! He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> Still in the broom closet? Yes! Standing around doing nothing? Because I can. Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I'm just going to wait. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? Okay, fine. I said Stanley walked past the broom closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Sure I did. What's this? But Stanley just couldn't do it. Nope. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Mm -hmm. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. No. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet? Ah. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Yeah. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Yep. Were they simply repeating? Yep. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh. What a relief Stanley felt. I don't to think it's a dream. He found an answer, an explanation. His co workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. 
And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently. Oh, no. And he invited it himself repeats. to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. Nope. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Yeah. Can anyone hear my voice? It's just Who all am repeating. I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. That's not he normal. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career. Mm -hmm. And by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Damn, okay. What the hell? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the <laughs> office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. like how it's like mocking me when Stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on his left this was not the correct way to the meeting room and Stanley knew it perfectly well 
Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Can I? I don't think I've actually tried to open the door that closes. Oh, it doesn't even do anything. Wait, can I walk through it? No. Hmm. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What was it about this room that called so deeply and so personally to Stanley? Its grace, its subtle charm, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I don't think I've actually taken this door yet. No, nope, I have not. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Okay. Yeah, that's not what I'm doing. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh, da, 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 da. from here, it's, um, left. Okay. Fuck. I want, I want one of the other doors. Oh, no. No, Wait. it's to the right, my mistake. <laughs> No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? <laughs> it's clearly... Oh, dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. Whoa! How about this door? What's with the truck? Huh? Oh. <gasps> Whoa! No, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. No. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, We'll just restart the game from the beginning. No. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? No. Okay. From the top. Fuck! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I'm doing it again. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. I don't Perhaps give a shit. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley... Wait. Wait. What? No, I... No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over completely. Oh my fresh. god. Everything should be. Oh, did something change? Yes. Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere or. Uh... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, no. Stanley. Let's find the story. Hell yeah. Inner guilt. Everyone knows what you did. They're just holding back to let I'll you say torture it. yourself. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? No. Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again. But it's got to be better than this. No, it's okay, fine. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? No! Oh, fuck. <laughs> 
All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Let me guess. No doors. Yep, oh, no doors! Uh, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. <laughs> it's possible the story is back where we just came from. Nah. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? But I don't want to. Okay, fine. Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. It's blue now. Oh no. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. The hell? Yup. Oh, it's getting weird. Now this, well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. This is cool. Is this a story? I don't think so. Yeah, it's a story. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. No. It, is that correct? No. Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? That's fine. Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? Yeah. You win! Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off. So, good job. Thanks. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. I feel we great. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay. I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I like I it. I don't care what might happen this time. I have to restart. Mm, okay. <laughs> that was a fucking right, adventure I've line. Got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple the is line. that? Okay, so like, don't follow the line. And like go touch everything else. Cool, cool, cool. I don't know why. I just wait. This room is different. <laughs> yeah, the room's different now. Oh. That's new? See, I kind of want to go to the new place and follow the line, but like... I also just want to... No, no, I'm down. We're leaving it up to the line from now on. Okay. Follow the line. <gasps> Someone's playing solitaire. Are you winning? Hmm. Okay. I, I am gonna check like you every see, single door. The line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. 
Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination? I mean, even technically. Even there's no story there. Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Mm. Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. No. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence rests inside it's of a giant your circle. subjective experience of this office... Is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. What? That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Ooh. I'm not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. Okay. Honestly, it's great music. Ah. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Hi, Lady Lux. How are you? What the hell? Why do I have to? <laughs> you're good, you have a sore throat, your little has a fever, but we're good other than that. I'm sorry to hear your little guy has a, a sore throat, or has a fever. I'm good though. We're playing the Stanley Parable. I've never played it before, and I'm having a great time with it. The music's kind of a bop. Wait, cut the music. Aww. Go back and look at that fern. But I like the music. Stanley. This fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. Ah, you won't want to miss anything. That's a, mm, that's a lot to ask of me. It's a fern. Like, what do you... Okay, fine. What? Wait, what? We're back at the office? Yeah. No, no, no. Line... You do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Wait. So the... Oh, so this is the door we went through first. <gasps> the computers are on. I don't know. I just keep wanting to touch everything. All the computers that are on, I feel the need to touch. <gasps> we can go in here now. Ooh. I don't know if have you played the Stanley Parable before because I've never played it before and I'm having a great time this is the the newest one the the deluxe one that just came out I don't know what's different 
between like the original and the oh. Um. No, oh, no, no, not again. Yes. How could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... Oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. Fuck. <laughs> we already had this line. You know what, what? Stanley? What? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? Not We're much. intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Okay. Something exciting, daring, mysterious. All this all sounds perfectly doable. Mm -hmm. Why don't we simply start wandering in? Well, I don't know. How about this direction? <gasps> this is a new direction. Okay. Now, yes, this is exciting. All the blank Just walls. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. The fucking circle. We don't want our story. It's a do. circle. Go it's wild. a circle. Use your imagination. It's a circle. Whatever oh, it's it not anymore. Be, Stanley, what the hell? I'm ready for it. It was a circle. Oh no, not you again. Hi. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. Okay. No lines or monitor rooms. Okay. Just don't acknowledge it. And we should be fine. Okay. This is very portal. Like the humor of it. Is very funny. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. Okay. From here, the story is in our control. Okay. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Mm -hmm. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay. So I know that each door has to lead somewhere. I don't want to walk which in a means circle. That somewhere, the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door. That leads here. And that in turn means that our destination corresponds with the counter inverted reverse door's origin. So, starting from the right, let us ask will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? What? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Can I go through the left one? Fuck. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, hold up, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's Wait. only one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game what, eight eight times? Yeah. That's really how all There's this a bookstore? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? And then Why the game restarts on its own. All of this? Is it really? No, it can't be. I, I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the timer d stopped? The timer stopped. Does that mean... Um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? Probably Being not. Whatever it is that made this schedule. How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, Let's try a door. Okay. I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? Can I have I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination seat? or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. I mean, I guess. But in the meantime, if you... What?
Did it auto restart? Stanley had never seen the office this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. The lines are gone. That's the door that was already open. I can't jump. I, I just tried. Yeah, I'm I'm anticipating. Oh, line. I'm anticipating like eventually when Stanley it'll... came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. They reversed it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time understood true happiness. Then the feeling went away, and he felt sad again. Aww. Then it came back, and lingered for a minute or two. <laughs> now it's only half there. Just a kind of, um, tingle. Aww. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Hey, that's not different. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. I want to go over there. <gasps> Wait, the line's down there now. Yeah. Let's do that. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. No! But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <sighs> Fuck. How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Oh, shit. Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Let's try Perhaps that again. He wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach. Oh, that's giddy new. in a way he had never known before. Was it this room? A connection between the two? Could a man love a room? I mean, truly, truly deeply, madly. Love. That's cute. But eager to get back to business, <laughs> Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions. It's Stop! I know. I'm shit. Look, Stanley. I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Okay, my I'm character so moves really so much faster I realize that investing in your trust and in farther else than I anticipate but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time there's someone you've been neglecting Stanley someone you've forgotten about what? really yeah in the middle of something do you have zero consideration for others no Are you that convinced that I want something bad yeah, I need to happen key, to you I need a what? key card I don't know how to convince you of this but I really do want to help you no. to show you something beautiful danger Look, everywhere let me, Ooh. let me prove that I'm on your side okay give me a chance I need a key card. 
Cargo. Operations manual. Love it. No buckets. Okay. Now listen carefully, this is important. Okay. Stanley walked through the red door. Okay. I need a key card. Aha. Perhaps you misunderstood. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. Okay. <laughs> I still don't think we're communicating <laughs> properly. Stanley walked through the red door. No. <laughs> All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this <laughs> road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see, oh. there's nothing here. Oh, I like Haven't it. Haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first I place. I want to go there. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? <laughs> Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Yeah. Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Puppies. Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. Okay. There we go. A third option. Huh? This already uh. feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. No. What? Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. I still can't jump. <sighs> okay, three. Oh, of course. A three. Really? Yep. Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual opinion? I know, that's know? the point. Any level of critical thinking or that's engagement with your surroundings? That's literally why I chose three. Does that sound good? Think we can do that? Yes? Mm, wonderful. Don't give me a one Here, to five if you want an actual answer. Based on your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. I haven't played before. Be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. What? <laughs> I'm literally in last place. Friends was empty. Fuck. This is your superior. I'm <laughs> This game is roasting me right now. Is it just gonna do it again? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, let's go through the door. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Okay. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. Okay. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? No, sure. Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. Mm -hmm. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? 
Be sure to keep notes on your experience. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Second because if it's one. the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. <laughs> I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. Okay. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. You're welcome. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game just to ease the pain? Okay. Let's see. What do we have here? Can I play pinball mm -hmm. or something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> ah, fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stan? We're playing Firewatch. What is our motivation? Hmm. <laughs> well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians no! below you from up high in your creep tower. But perhaps it's not... for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating no! venture into the experience of total mental depravity. No! <laughs> so far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Oh my god. They recreated Firewatch. Holy shit. My God, I love Firewatch. Oh, no, 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 it can't be. It is, it's an open world game. Good God, quickly Just... block it off. No. Goodness, Stanley, what a close call. You nearly wandered off into that, that thing. Oh. A big, open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. No, we're not. We're okay. literally in I'm the woods. Get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. No. Something with nice, big... Insurmountable walls. Let me out. <laughs> I want to play Firewatch. Okay. I think this will be just the thing. <laughs> Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. I don't just a play nice Rocket big League. box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now, this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Okay. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Yeah. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is yeah. this game sports ball? It's Stanley, sort of. I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. <laughs> yes. I think surely we must. Okay, okay, Stanley. Here's the ball. Have fun. I've actually never played Rocket League before. Oh, hell yeah. I still can't jump, by the way. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Yeah. Is it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure... Do I get surely more? multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. How many I do I get? Hard. Here comes another ball. Yes. Oh, goodness, that really does feel amazing, doesn't it? 
Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. More balls. <laughs> Stanley, are you having fun? Is this a real video game? Well, I sure hope you're having a good time because guess what? It's what? over. Aww. That's right. Your little fun you took comes my to balls an end. away. This is my game, and what I say goes. You get to have fun when I let you, Stanley. Besides, you need someone like me to set boundaries for you. Without rules or boundaries, video games are nothing. Yes, that's what I am. I am structured treated like a child. I'm your sense of purpose. And since you decided you didn't want to play my game, now I don't want to play with you either. So goodbye, Stanley. I'm leaving. See how you'd like it when I'm not around to set the rules. Somehow, I don't think you'll enjoy it as much. But who knows? You're an inventive kid. You'll come up with something. After all, you're I'm the going one the goal. who knows you're right. best. Take care, Stanley. Oh, goodbye. Wait. Oh, no. What are you doing? I don't know. Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. You still have fun. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Oh. Where am I? Yeah, sure. We'll go towards the light. Oh, we're ba going back to our office. If you've played Portal before, this section feels very much like when you escape from GLaDOS. And we're just sort of like on our own touching everything to see where we can go. Honestly, I don't... What just happened? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. Oh, he's talking to me, not Stanley and anymore. And the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll mm -hmm. understand soon what I was trying to tell him. A very Portal 2 vibes, me. absolutely. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. <laughs> He's just waiting. Yeah, 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 go for it. How do I Oh no There's a way to do this There's like a Oh yeah, you're fine I was wondering <laughs> if it would bop you, but yeah, you're good Wait, I need to watch it. Disclaimer, I have a potato filter and the French Redeem and the bean. I'm watching it. Sorry. Elle devra me faire confiance. Uh, ça va être soit... Ah, oh, soit gâteau de fête. Bugs, tu pourrais peut-être juste traduire les choix que j'ai. Gâteau de fête ou eau de vaisselle sale. Oh, mon 
mon dieu. On le voit pas vraiment ici, là. Oh, le meilleur. Le meilleur. Un, deux, trois, go. Oh no, Angie. Oh, oh, oh no. Ah uh ah. -uh. You with the potato filter on reminds me of Tethaclack. I don't know why, but it does. The potato made it absolutely a thousand times better. Yes. I love Tethaclack. That's what I used to listen to and like, ugh, oh, it was fantastic. It was, it was so good. I haven't watched it in years, but... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Wait, Stan had the decided office to go is to the new. Meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Wait, it's blue now, and it's configured differently. What the hell? Yeah, the dishwater is nasty. <gasps> Welcome to the whiteboard ending? Dog mode. There's a dog mode? Wait, I need to open up all the doors. I need to open the doors. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance six, two, the six. story in any way. 626. I didn't I like literally didn't even read the rest of your question. You just uh, I just saw stitch experiment number and I was like, yeah. Is that, like... Is that how you test if you, like, like people or not? Because, honestly, that's a pretty good... That's a pretty good way. When oh, Stanley no. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I love Stitch. I have been looking at Stitch Funko Pops for the last, like... I don't know... Year or so? Um, since I got into Funko Pops, I don't have one yet, but that'll be my next one. Are all the doors, all the endings? No. So the doors are employee numbers. So we're number 429. No, 427. Right? I just, I kind of want to stitch Funko. I only have one. I have Buttercup. From the Princess Bride. That's my only one. But she hangs up. She hangs out on top of my uh, computer tower. So also the narrator. I don't listen to him all the time. Just FYI. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. And Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first. Just to admire it. He also likes to comment on the fact that I touch all the doorknobs to see if any of them will open. It's fine. You might have the best one. The lounge was grand, majestic, perhaps too majestic. <laughs> like a combination of a much smaller version and a much larger version of this exact room. It all made Stanley <laughs> uncomfortable. It kind of is. he started to bleed a little. This made him smile. At last, proof that he was human. What? It made him bleed a little? Yeah. But eager to get back to business, <laughs> Stanley took the first open door on his left. The Princess Bride is... one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Yeah. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong I'm gonna jump down here. again. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize it's a great that investing movie. your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you forgot. What? Really? 
I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this. But I still can't I really jump. I do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Okay, we did Give this already, and I... Now listen carefully, this is important. Went through the blue door Stanley three times. through the red door. So we're gonna listen to him. We went, we like literally went through the blue door three times and he kept moving it. Also, I'm on the hunt for a key card. There are multiple doors that have, that require like a swipe card. I want one. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. <laughs> Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? No. The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. We're going in a running circle. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Uh-huh. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? Yeah. I just, I want it to stop. Then make it stop. I would, we would both be so much happier if we just stopped. Then just stop. And I think, well, I think I have a solution. Make a wall. Yeah. Let me show you. Make a wall. There you go. Good job, bud. Yeah, it's extremely portal vibes. As soon as I started hearing like the narrator's voice and whatnot and like the mm. humor of it, I was like, what yes. I'm gonna love this what game. Are we looking for? Hmm? We also <laughs> we played uh well we got transported into Firewatch and then into Rocket League. Just before y'all um, raided us. So, wait, what the hell? Here, yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this... No, wait, where are you going? <laughs> oh, no. Stay away from those stairs. Okay. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Can I jump yet? Nope. Yeah, it, it brought Please, us into no, Rocket Stanley, League. Let me stay here. Don't take this from me. And then... Please, Stanley, <laughs> think about what you're doing. <laughs> it brought us into Rocket League, and I jumped into the goal. And then we got transported. Okay, I'm about to jump, y'all. No! Oh, thank God you lived. Okay, let's do it again. You had me worried there for a moment. No, no, no. What are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking they you know. not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why okay. are you doing this? Because I can't. Because it annoys you. Stanley, let's go back to the <laughs> other room. Can you do that for me? <laughs> My God. Is this really how much you dislike my game? Yes. That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? Yes. You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Yes, because it's Am very I funny. The situation correctly? Yeah. Well, maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too One much more time. to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Okay. I still can't jump. That was my first achievement, is attempting to jump like a million times. <sighs> Alright. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. Are we gonna load into our office? Yup. Yeah, we're 427. So this is all of our, uh... Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. Time. The time's different. The time's different. Yeah. 
Yep. I like listening to the narrator sometimes, but also, like, it's very fun to mess with him. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? <laughs> the game knows what it's doing. This is fun. Can I jump yet? Nope. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. Which is what we're playing. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Is this the new content? Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. This is so weird. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. It's not moving. Um, is it broken? <laughs> What's going on here? Should we, should we be moving somewhere or? or oh, oh, there we go. There we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them. Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. The jump circle? All right. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. <laughs> Do I literally stand in a circle and jump? Is this how I learn how to jump? Are you kidding? Up until now, I have not been able to jump. I have tried multiple times. I fucking hate it. I can't- <gasps> I can't jump anymore! Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? That's bullshit! <laughs> Goodness, another elevator. <laughs> Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting It's better new than content? your fucking if game. This is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content. He made right a game there. where now, I had to I push a button to, to stop a baby from going in the fire. I didn't push the, the button. The Stanley Parable Ultra It was a fake Deluxe, baby, by the way. Now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if. Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. <sighs> what is I it now? I knew there had to be something else. Oh, interesting. I'm ready for whatever it is. Oh, I just burped a little bit, and I tasted the really bad bean. Thank you for enjoying the new content. Oh, God. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? 
This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market <laughs> for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built this up too fantastic. much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game? No! And we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really I about. I like the new content. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. All right. What do you say, friend? Do I have a choice? Nope. They like to poke fun at themselves. Ooh, this is different. So yeah, this is what we usually walk out to. <laughs> Come over here in the vent. I want to show you something. Okay. Oh. Oh. You don't want to see the cool surprise I made for you? No, well, I fine. do. You're a dork anyway, so who cares? I'll go. I'll oh, go. Never mind. You're not a dork. Wait, will you say something if I go? Okay, I don't actually want to go that way. I, I want to see what's in here. This is like, um, uh, what's his name in Portal 2? Wesley? Is that, is that what the little guy's name is? Like okay, do you remember kick? how cheap and unsatisfying the new ultra deluxe content turned yeah, out to very be? Cheap. Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much think, better yeah. the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Okay. Just our little secret. Take a look. What the hell? I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. What is this? It's a little museum. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013 when the game Hi, originally Hi, Huckleberry. Launched? Back how are then, you? Video games had integrity. Back then, it's it nice all to see you meant again. something. Oh, the waste. It's literally 2013. Yep. Okay, okay. What are these? Audience award. British Academy of Film and Television Arts. <laughs> okay, sure. It looks cute. It's very similar to the Portal games in terms of, like, humor. So if you like those, I think you'll enjoy. This is the Steam page. <laughs> oh, it's their first dollar they made? Cute. Hmm. 
go outside, don't play for five years, unachievable. It's impossible to get this achievement. Okay. Yeah, we're just, we're being chill today. Wait, what does this say? Creator is surprisingly down to earth. Rutgers goes from scandal to new crisis. Colleges show uneven effort to enroll poor. Business leaders pushing election of council allies. Okay. So that's how this sort of started. Stanley Parable deals tough choices. Okay. Can I sit down and like... Oh, I can't. Never mind. Je suis dans la memories of la prise et je n'attends. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. Go to it bed. was all okay. of them. And now, Thank you for being here. It's nothing. I really appreciate it. It's no games it. at all. And have a good night. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. That open? Okay. Uh, how do you review a game like this? Stanley Parable, to describe to anyone part of it is to risk its ruination, to detail what it has to say about game design, the illusion of choice, and the psychology of the gamer is to tell you too much. Comparisons, too, are going to be woefully inadequate. Perhaps its closest cousin would be Dear Esther, but where Dear Esther wastes the form of interactive entertainment, Stanley Parable uses and then subverts it, where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art. Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Even so, holding the game to the standards of any other title is simply not going to be correct. Hmm. Okay. I'm still looking for a key card. Minecraft! Maintenance? Well, I can't go in here. But those are the characters. Okay. The blue and red door. We've already seen that. Okay. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. Mm -hmm. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. I like the new it content. I got the to jump. It just to be left alone. I liked to it. To spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. But this is the new content. No, I don't want to go that way. I want to go that way. I can't jump. I can't go that way. <sighs> Maybe I can go. These were simpler times. Maintenance. But I wouldn't give to go back. To have it all over again? Wait, hang on. What? I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. Ooh. What's this? What's down here? Oh no. Oh 
God, no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the <laughs> online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Not recommended. Oh, fuck. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. I know! Where else can I go? I love that the game makes fun of itself. Oh my god, it's a review graveyard. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? Preachy? I'm not preachy, am I? You wouldn't tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, I don't goodness. think you can. This is actually quite shocking for Aww. me. Right. I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it, well, I always thought it did. But maybe it wasn't. Mm. Oh dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel... Well, it's not like unimpeachable if it's there. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Aww. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations <laughs> of what's happening. <laughs> I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's all What is happening? I do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. Oh, you made me a little, a little thing. Nice. Oh, it's this is cute. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players the have been asking The clock's too. And I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling. Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long rambling monologue full of... <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? The clock's that's moving the forward too. The, button. the minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through yeah. is becoming longer and longer. That last one was well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. No. Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 <laughs> hours! You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my yeah, God, there's, no, there's door. no way out of the room. Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, what I... What is happening? I it's been a week. The door's gone. For two weeks. I've been... Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. Mm -hmm. I have the had plant's time to dead. think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? No. Let me describe it for you. Oh, boy. To begin with, there is only regret. Yeah, we're skipping this. There's only... Hello? Are you dead? Is he dead?
Is there a door? Nope. Did I kill the narrator? The battery's dead. <laughs> the clock fell off. <laughs> But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. Oh, it was meant no. to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, Entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic. Anything? How many times do I have to skip? The end is never the end. Oh never no! The end. Is never 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 the. I don't know which is worse. Oh, it's raining now from the ceiling. The pipes leaking. Oh no! Maintenance is going to hell. Oh my god! That's very portal. Holy. Yup. I would love if we could get a little gun. I would love to have a portal gun. That would be just like the icing on the cake right now. We're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, this is kind of creepy now. I don't like it as much. Um... Just turned into a horror game. Oh, thank god. Oh... Uh oh. Uh, we broke the game. All of his co-workers were gone. Yeah. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So this is how it always starts. This is the same way we've been going. New, new content? Fuck it, why not? Oh good, you noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Okay. I want to know what the new new content is. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley parable mm -hmm. and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. Aww. The original Stanley parable was a landmark. And any new content for it should live up to that legacy. I so agree. forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step 
even further. Okay. Which is why I am very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Oh. <laughs> yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This Taste is what sequel. fans have truly been asking for. We're going to the Investor Showcase. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra nah. Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. The color red? Is that what we're going through? Okay. Now to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be. Oh. But let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Are you sure? Oh, this looks awesome. Wow. Whoa. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Cool. Hear your name in the game. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. What? For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. <laughs> so with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button, which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Uh-huh. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only <laughs> says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. I'd push Just it. play along. I promise you'll love I, it. I play, okay, push. here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim. This is so sleeping dumb. and waking as Jim. Jim. Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. <laughs> if you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. <laughs> okay, we're doing it again. And this time, <laughs> let me finish first. <clears throat> now. Allow yourself to become Jim. If they let me push it, I'm Imagine pushing it again. Yourself... All right, fine, whatever. It's just a meaningless button that says Jim. Are you happy now? Yes. Get out of here. I'm done with this button. Okay. Why don't you go humiliate me in front of a different feature that I worked very hard on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I go out? This is my favorite part of the game. It's just like annoying the shit out of the narrator. Maybe I'll only let people named Jim play the Stanley Parable too. Okay. They would appreciate what I've created here. Whole new office. Ooh. Please no screenshots. Mm, I can't screenshot. I tried to. Collectibles. 
Very new easy achievement. Hell yeah. What is it? Pull the lever, receive your new achievement. No more steps. It just works. Okay. Now, here's something special. You remember that broken I test achievement that got like left this. in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. I don't like it. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement <laughs> it work is right still now. fully broken. Got I'm it. not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Okay. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. <laughs> okay. This is a really creepy place to go. Like, it feels weird to just, like, bring us down here. Oh, I want to go in there. Okay. Not much of a showcase so far, huh? What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Oh, we've, we've seen the jump circle. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle <laughs> back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. Well, shit. Okay, what's over here? Jump circle, this map, uh-huh. Free achievement, the button that says your name. Merch. Settings, world champion, Stanley Parable, reassurance bucket. Office decorations, epilogue, collectibles, infinite hole, and the exit. Alright, well, we gotta go get them all. What is this? Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. <laughs> In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. Yep. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Thanks. I can't move. What is happening? God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Yeah, isn't it? I'm kind of curious to know if uh, there okay, actually I'll are more honest, collectibles. I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, okay. like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, you don't it really makes care. you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy 12th <laughs> Birthday, step niece it is. Thanks. I feel useless. <gasps> Merch! Oh, actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Okay. Oh, this is new. I want to go see the reassurance bucket. Wow, this is a fancy staircase. 
A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical. Well, that's the point that of the it game. It engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Mm -hmm. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. Okay. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, anytime you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. Such as a stupid bucket. The, bucket. the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps it's just even a bucket. Comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. <laughs> Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket <laughs> is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. Okay. Can you feel it? No. The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? Aw, thanks. I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Can I put the bucket back? Okay, I'll just carry the bucket. Oh, this feels really dumb. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. So where else can I go? This is the balloon hall. Here? Yeah. Is this the artwork hallway? Oh no, this is the black hole. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. Okay. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's no, this is a literally portal. Falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. It's portal. You just make two holes and then you'll poo poo poo. But, okay. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. How do you stop it, now though? Then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Okay. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, yes. but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Why? Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Is it because it's not actually infinite, or, uh... Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but yeah? it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature yep. of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? Yes. To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. <laughs> From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... <laughs> okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. Hell yeah. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. <laughs> Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal it's a me problem? wants to fall infinitely. I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. I'm not a problem. <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both <laughs> said some things we didn't mean. <laughs> Why don't shit. we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? Okay. 
If that works for you, sure. then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hold and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Okay. I just want to see if he says anything. Does he really not say anything? Fine. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Can I jump back down the hole? Oh, for heaven. <laughs> you see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. <laughs> Not normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. It goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this <laughs> it did. time? did. I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. Yeah. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Yeah. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Okay. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. Nope. I really do have so much gosh. How could I have guessed? <laughs> You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing where It's a uh, lot shorter. Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep. No, even it's really by the not. lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Mm. Here, let's try something. Okay. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Cool. Well, there it is. Oh, shame shit. of my lie has come to haunt me. Not only is the hole not infinite, but it's barely even a hole at this point. <laughs> it's a tiny pit. It's more of a concavity, yeah. or even a very aggressive divot. How is this still appealing to you? <laughs> I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Okay. Hmm. I can't. Is the, um, teleport button not working? <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Well, I mean... I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? No. Well, I suppose... I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. What? I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole. And now you you'll get more time with it than hole? you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole. I get to do literally anything else. Okay. Take care, Stanley. Okay, bye. I hope you and the hole... Have a wonderful rest of eternity. Well. What? We're going down.
No. You're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there. Aww, away into that was fun. Land. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? Okay. From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. Oh, boy. And I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. Is it happening again? Oh. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. But we already did this. Oh, the epilogue. We didn't do this before. But I want to... Okay. What else is there? So... We've done everything? Except the settings world champion and the epilogue and the exit okay Wait. <laughs> An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. <laughs> That's the epilogue, okay. You literally just have to go over there and... Oh, boy. Okay, let's go check out the settings now. Maybe you have to do it in a specific order. No. Hmm. I think we did everything else. Yeah. Unless these doors open? Jim. 
See, if you'd only played along, that would have been your name, the button says. But no. Instead, oh, I can't even think about it. I'm taking the gym button away. <laughs> Wait, did he actually take the button away? <laughs> it's actually gone. Okay. Can I push this? No. Maybe I have to go and like backtrack on some of the things that we've already done. go see what's in the bucket room? Maybe? Hmm. Maybe not. Oh, there's a door here. No. Okay. Come now, you've already made your choice. It's true that you chose badly, but we all have to move on from our mistakes. Okay. Let me keep revisiting stuff then. So, there was the achievement thingy down here. No, still doesn't work. Door? Nope. I still can't go in there. Um, I guess I can go in here. Nope. Okay. Let's try the exit. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? No. Ready to move on now? I wanted to see settings. But you wouldn't let me. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. Mm -hmm. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential <laughs> here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. Wow. Oh, who am I kidding, Stanley? This two isn't a coherent now. video game at all. It's a lot of gags. Yeah. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. No. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait. Maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. I can take the original Stanley <laughs> Parable and simply... Well... 
Insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. This is the story of a man named Stanley. <laughs> That's how it began. Stanley worked for a company in a big building <laughs> where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul lifting, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, all the new balloons. or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. <laughs> this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Yo. <laughs> oh my god, it's happening again! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Look at the bucket! <laughs> Stanley felt the bucket calling to him, begging him to pick okay, it up. Okay, fine, I'll pick up the Why bucket. Why was he not doing it? <laughs> fine, I'll Stanley fucking picked up pick the up the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How in there? Never mind. The bucket was wrong. <laughs> Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Hmm... No. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo <gasps> lift. <laughs> you found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no <laughs> reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful I can't figurines. believe they're actually implementing everything. Oh, this is fantastic. Okay, there's like a vent over here. Okay. 
right? We go this way. Oh, wow. Okay. Narrator sound system? Okay. This is day number 295. Tape number... <laughs> I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. It doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? Aww. I can... I can monetize it. Uh-oh. Yes. Oh, no. It's unthinkable the amounts of money oh, people no. will pay for even just an hour with the <laughs> bucket. Turn. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful. Because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get me. What's that? Who's there? Oh no. Caporata. What? Already this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. Okay, don't pick up the bucket. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. It was okay. It was okay, aww. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Where else can I go? Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Let's go I'm up. Not your enemy. I think we've really only done it not. once. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be oh, There's a balloons up there, the too. The fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What's Please, on that stop trying area? to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. <laughs> this is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. What if I don't? Don't 
Do I have to? Because the first time we did this, I picked it up. Maybe I have to. Oh, it's our Hold wife on, again. Sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. Wife. I'm just pouring the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Your day. Okay, this is the same scene over oh, again. come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Sorry, but you're in my story now. Yeah, it's exactly the same. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. So there have to be doors that we haven't Look at him there, pushing buttons, gone into doing yet. exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen But I'm not his sure life. where those are. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished I do off like the this face story, of the though. earth. The thought excited him terribly. It's too bad I can't, like, so skip he went through further. this a little bit. He imagined that he came to two open to this. doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely I'm even anticipating mattered what lay it's behind not different floor. than the first time. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Yeah, it's Down not one different. path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that Which weaved we in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. We did that. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. It's wishing literally what we're doing right now. Wishing would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path. Mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing is the same buttons he always has. Is there actually an end to has. this game? Nothing has changed. Or no. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which Because I'm which starting to doubt it. One. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. And then I have to. You see? Can he just not hear me? Yeah. How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. 
And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. <laughs> that happened before, too. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Let's try this out. Interesting. Trust the completionist instinct? Oh my god. Four sixteen. Okay. He made fun of me the last time I was in the broom closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh shit, I don't think I actually ever went upstairs. I think we went downstairs first. Yeah, we were ne <laughs> we never came in here. Oh my god. Hey. Another new to Stanley Figurine. <laughs> this um you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Mini stands Stanley figs. Um what about Stanlerines? No, yes, I like mini stands. I, mean, I like that. Okay. Another Stanlerine under your belt. Because the boss knows uh, that what the boss says goes. If the boss has suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, we did not. Oh, shit. Oh. Why is there a gun to the panda's head? Oh my god! Okay, wait, we'll come back. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing <laughs> random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Wow! Hey. Lately, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Okay. Oh, this is so bizarre, and I love it. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. Oh. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Wow. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? 
This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read <laughs> Mind Control Facility. <laughs> Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Really? Let's find out. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Okay. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, <laughs> concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. <laughs> As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, <laughs> as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Oh, look at the credits! Uh, Kevin writing the voice of the narrator recorded dialogue for the entire game roughly three separate times over the two years of development. These are clips from early takes that were not used in the final game. The green door. Where were the the very first incarnation of the freedom ending in the game's alpha. Monitor room elevator. For a time, the elevator in the monitor room could only go up and down with freedom above and countdown below. We abandoned this when players found it too difficult to remember what was up and what was down and placed the two endings together instead. For a long time, we had an ending that only ended when the player restarted from the escape menu. Fortunately, very few players realized this was what they were supposed to do, which was frustrating for everyone. Aww. <laughs> The screenshot depicts an early version of the ending known as Zending, which was eventually cut and merged with another part of the game. The Zending went through many iterations. This room represents the fourth version of the ending, and we thought it was complete, but decided to abandon it and change it again shortly before launch. 
These levers were originally part of the zending. The player would pull a lever and the narrator would describe what that color had pulled. Can I? No, I can't. Okay. We ran four major trailer teaser trailers over the course of the game's development, each meant to convey something about the spirit of the game. This is the first one released in May 2012. It features a series of broken rooms and the voice of the narrator informing viewers that he is repairing a new version of this daily parable. The flow of the hallways following the first two doors was important to get right since players will replay them so many times. We discussed a number of designs, but ultimately it was a simpler version that went out. Hmm. Interesting. Previous versions of the choice leading to the apartment ending there's an apartment ending? Timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Oh! I had to wait 15 seconds? That was it? I think we've already been here. From left to right, the evolution of Stanley's office over time. The first was created in November 2011, second March 2012, the third February 2013. Mm, so they took out the second computer and added some more stuff. Okay. After the second trailer we sent out, we asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned to use these further promotional materials, we never found the perfect use of them. Here is a selection of those emails. Ah. <laughs> Early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens the action game would become uh sentient and would wage war against the narrator he realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game plus some people interpret it as making fun of people who like shooters which was not our intention hmm. makes sense Well, <laughs> okay. Now that I've walked everywhere, what do we do? Like, the these are the credits. Oh, exit. There we go. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you 
Don't choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time. It's blue. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? The buckets. Stanley there. decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What the fuck? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? What is happening? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I want to go in the elevator. I don't think it does anything. It does not. You literally just stand in an elevator to listen to elevator music? <laughs> Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't, yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. I just want to see what happens if we listen to the lady at the end. Or Stanley actually, walked straight ahead no, let's the go to the mind control. The red mind control facility. I want to see what will happen. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. 
What horrible secret oh, did this place hold? We've already hold? seen this. Stanley thought to himself. We were up did there. He have the strength to find out. Now the monitors jumped to life. Yep. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Yeah. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't yeah, accept it. Yeah, we were literally it. standing his over own there. life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, <laughs> wasn't it? No. Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. Cool. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Probably not. Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Aww. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. That's cute. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Aww. Wait, beat the game achievement? Wait. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? No. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I don't think it actually ends. I think that you have to end it yourself. 